In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about looping as a consequence of the conditional statements that we learned in the previous video. When we discuss the idea of conditional statements, one of the big benefits that we can get out of them is the ability to repeat instructions. Of course, if we could branch to a specific label, we can always move back to a specific starting point and repeat instructions, and we can always exit that repetition using a comparison and some form of branching as you would with like a for loop or a while loop, right? So you're able to get that exact sort of idea. Looping while some sort of condition is true or while some sort of condition is not true, as well as looping a specific number of times. So we can get both of those loops working in assembly in the same sort of way that we would in a high level language, maybe with a little bit more finesse required to make it actually work. So to better understand this, we're gonna take a look at a relatively simple example. This is going to draw from a lot of the things that we've learned so far, so it's going to be a great way to sort of refresh your knowledge and apply some of these instructions in a more practical way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by defining a list of numbers. And this number list is just like all the numbers from 1 to 10, so something very simple for us. And what we're gonna do is we're going to load this list into memory, and we're gonna to try to iterate the list. So the first few parts of that is fairly simple, right? We're gonna load the list into memory using LDR. So that part is, uh, it's no big deal. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by loading the first element into my, into my memory. I'm gonna use R1 to store the elements of the list. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add up all of the numbers inside of the list and I'm going to store that result in R2. So that's sort of the main idea of our program. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start by loading the value of the first value of the list into R1. Of course, we use that using addressing based on the address that was placed inside of R0. And then we can do the addition to add that first value into R2 to sort of like initialize everything, right? So that gives us sort of like an initialization. And then we can actually start to talk about the looping portion of this. So this starts up the list. So what we've done so far is we've sort of set to the, um, the first value of our sum equal to the first value in the list. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate past that point and add those values onto that R2 register till we've reached the end of the list. Now this creates an interesting concept, right? How do we find the end of the list? Well, let's take a look at what a list looks like in memory. I'm gonna go ahead and compile and just step into it to find the location on my list. It's at location 10 in memory. And we can see it right here. You see all the numbers from one to 10. And then afterwards we get all of these A's repeated. Now it turns out in the case of my memory, I have all A's as a representation of an empty slot in memory. So it goes to serve that if we have this set of A's, we've reached the end of the list. So I'm going to continue to move through the list iterating until I reach something that is equal to this. Now how we do that check is actually a little bit complicated. We actually have to do something sort of interesting here. Now, when we work with assembly, you might think, okay, well, that's easy. I can just compare, you know, that value and then we'll be done. But the way that assembly, specifically ARM assembly, handles literals is a little bit weird. So when we have those immediate values or literals, they can only be a specific size. And I believe that size is typically two hex values. So if we have something bigger than two hex values, we have to be a little bit more creative with how we deal with this. And the main way that we're gonna deal with this is we're going to use constants. And constants isn't something that we've really talked about so far, but they're very simple. At the very top of our program, we're gonna define our constant using a keyword that is dot equ. So equ like this. Similar to defining our list, we're gonna give this a name and a value. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it because I don't wanna mess it up here. So I'll just copy this over. I'll place that there. And there you have it. That is our constant defined. So this defines a constant called end list and it gives it a value, which is this value here. And then we can load this into memory using an LDR like we've done with the, um, with the list loading it. It's so gonna load this into R3, just to have it available to us. So 
So there we have this value now loaded into R3. And now we can actually do our loop. So I'm gonna start by creating a label for our loop. And what our loop is going to do is it's going to load the next value in the list. So what this will do is it will increment by four and then it will load the value of that address into R1. And then it's gonna take a look at this value and see if it is equal to that location in memory that is empty. So this, all these A's here. So remember we stored that in R3. So we're gonna compare R1 to R3. If those are equal to each other, we want to leave the loop. So I'm gonna say BQ exit. I'm gonna put a label exit here. And the label exit isn't gonna do anything. It's just gonna be the exit point of this loop. Alternatively, if we have not reached the end of the list, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the value into R2, and then I'm going to loop again. So I'm gonna to branch to the top of the loop. So to understand this, what's gonna happen is it's gonna load the next value in the list. If that value is equal to the end of the list, so this set of memory that sort of is uninitialized, then we're going to go to the exit. Otherwise, we're gonna add that value to the total and then we're going to loop again. Now, this isn't the only way that we could find the end of the list. We could know the length of the list. That could be another way that we might be able to do this. And there are likely other tricks that work in assembly to be able to do this. However, mostly when we have the length of the list, it makes things a little bit easier for us to be able to do. Um, there's an interesting idea of uninitialized memory, it could be a little bit unpredictable, right? We don't necessarily know that these values are going to be stored this way. So the way that I'm doing it right now is a simple example that's going to demonstrate to you the idea of looping. In the real world, when we're doing this, it's a little bit more complicated. What we would end up doing is we would end up putting a special value at the end of this list, you know, something predictable. And then when it loads into memory, we know what value is at the end of the list. Um, I can actually give you a practical example of this. If you're familiar with C programming, you'll know that characters and strings have a special value at the end of it. And it's this backslash zero character. It's called the null terminator. What this is doing is it's indicating the end of the list so that when we iterate, we know where to stop. So that's just to give you a bit more of a practical idea of how we do this. But for now, we'll assume that we're in this perfect world where uninitialized memory stays put and we don't have to worry about that. But just in case you're curious about that, that would be the way that we would usually handle this sort of idea. So with that out of the way, let's just talk about what this program does. Let's go ahead and execute it. So you can see that we get the location into memory. We then load in that end location so we can check for it. We then start by loading the first value, which is the value one, and we add that onto the total. Now we get into the looping. So you can see the next value is two. We check if that's the end of the list, it's not. So we add that value to the total, and then we go back to the top. And then we continue doing that. And you'll see that this continues on for a while, right? So we're gonna do this for every single value inside of the list. It will just keep looping through, right? We're at seven, eight, nine, and 10. And once you reach 10, you'll see that the next value is going to be that end of the list, all of the A's there. So at this point, we compare them, we see that they are equal to each other. And you see that it skips us out to the exit rather than adding it to the total and looping again. So at this point, we've exited the loop, everything is done, we've iterated the list, and you can see that the value that we got at the end was 55, which is the value of adding one to 10 inclusive. And that's the way that we set up our loops. So using this sort of concept, you could do all sorts of different loops. You could do for loops, you could do while loops, and you know, you're able to sort of like expand your knowledge from here. This gives you the basic fundamentals, it shows you how you can use the branching for the loops, and from here, you can apply this in many different ways whenever looping is actually required. So that's everything for this video. In the next few videos, we'll take a look at some other instructions that we're able to use related to this idea of sort of structuring our program through conditionals and looping and see different ways that we can manage this sort of idea.